Hi, Sarah, you're muted. Well, how about that? <laughs> that should be better. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Bai. I'm the Director of Programming at MCA Denver. And this spring, we are offering you opportunities to meet and learn from the amazing artists in our exhibitions. We have an amazing exhibition up right now at MCA, Colorado in the Present Tense, featuring work by four Colorado artists, Narkita Gold, Maya Ruth Lee, Rick Griffith, and the incomparable Nathan Hall, who is joining us today. This program is part of a series of shows MCA Denver brings to you live every Wednesday. And if you like what you see here today, join us next Wednesday for more. You can find all the great programming we have coming up at mcadenver.org slash events. It takes an amazing group of artists to put together all of our talks and performances that we showcase on Wednesdays, but it takes something else too, and that's money. If you have the means, please consider donating to support MCA Denver. We suggest a donation of $10, which is what we would normally charge for tickets, but of course, any amount helps. Thank you for your support. Today we present Nathan Hall, Year Exploder. Nathan is a composer and artist who uses music as an artistic medium to explore science, nature, the fine arts, history, and sexuality. He is a former Fulbright scholar to Iceland and holds his doctorate in musical arts from CU Boulder. He has worked with groups and exhibited at institutions as wide ranging as the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, the Mattress Factory Museum, the Turkish Biennial, 437 LGBTQ singers, three new models, a climatologist, and a convention of roller coaster enthusiasts. Please welcome Nathan Hall. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction, Sarah. Um, I'm happy to say I haven't worked with all of those groups simultaneously, but I would like to try a piece with 437 singers, three nude models, and a climatologist. Um, but anyway, I'm here to talk about uh, my piece, Soundscape 2020, which is on exhibit at MCA Denver right now. And in the tradition of uh, Song Exploder, the podcast, we thought about year exploder and talking about our whole year and trying to break down all of the sounds and things that we've heard throughout the year and things I've collaged together. But I also thought it was kind of appropriate as, you know, there's parts of 2020 and let's be honest, 2021 that I could see exploded and just totally demolished and maybe we start over again. So, uh, so let's break down this year in sounds. And I thought I would show a little bit about my process in this work. The thing I started with when MCA approached me about making this work is what have I heard throughout 2020? I've, I went through each month and listed all the news clips, all the people I talked to, um, all the projects I did. And I kind of graphed out like the emotional arc of the piece. Um, on the right hand side of this slide, you can see like this big dip, which was of course like March, 2020. Uh, emotions were low, tensions were high. Things sort of rose up for me a little bit after that. And there've been bumps along the way. The holidays at the end felt hopeful. We sort of feel like maybe we're in the same kind of cycle again. So it was interesting to look back on the year and see what those kinds of sounds and how they affected you know, our world and my experiences. I then took all those sounds and brought them into a program called Ableton Live, which is more common that like DJs use it for remixing, but I love this uh, audio workstation. So I would drag in all these clips from video, news, um, phone clips from friends and family, audio from um, projects I did, and I would collage them together and try to find ways that sounds overlapped or contrasted. Maybe we added some effects like reverb and echo and delay. And I broke those sound collages down by months. So there's a January and a February, there's a June and July. Here's another month of what this looks like. There's different tracks that you can see and each sound clip that's a colored sample is actually a little bit of sound that I've been working with. We have uh, fades of volume coming in and out. 
And there's lots of layers as well. So you might go to the museum and experience something and not even know that all of these sounds are happening kind of in the background. These sounds come from a wide variety of things through the year. And we have some special guests today to kind of recreate those, some of those sounds. But one thing that was happening in January and February was for me was a performance of graphic scores. Graphic scores are a musical notation that also looks like visual art. And this is one of those pieces that's also on the back of our um, wall here. And here's another piece that you can actually interpret this through music. So I give you, give the performer a little key. We can create sounds with them. We can make notes, we can improvise a bit, but there's a basic structure for them. There were also legit music performances that I had. Some became online, some tried to be this hybrid of, you know, it, what could happen outdoors, what could happen over video, but there were notated music pieces as well throughout the year. And there were improvisations as well. I met the storytellers this summer and we worked on a project and then ended up videotaping it because I got a grant to work with the toy piano of all things, uh, this little diminutive instrument here. And storytellers so kindly partnered up with me in making kind of collaborative works where we started from a super simple idea and then that grew. So all of these collages together make up the piece that you'll see at the museum. And I thought we'd take a little walk through of some of the spaces and we can hear what the sounds ended up being like. There's even sound of my outside museum. This is January and February, which I call the before times. One day we will have live choral music again and my heart will just melt. Once you enter the museum and we go up the stairs, you'll hear other works of mine through sets of speakers. This one is March and April, or sort of this big upheaval of sound. We hear Jared Polis, our governor, giving messages about COVID. We hear our first Zoom calls trying to navigate online performances. We hear even uh, the sound of a sparrow because there were birds that actually increased their songs when our traffic died down. As you go up the staircase, you also hear two more months and we hear May and June. On the rooftop, I wanted visitors to experience kind of a breath of fresh air. You know, the outdoors has been our, our saving grace this past year. So this is like a place where we can really breathe and it feels very hopeful. So this is the end of 2020. And I made a lot of electronically controlled bells that chime along with the soundscape up there. favorite sound on the roof is the sound of my nephew's laugh, which my sister sent me over the phone on a FaceTime call. There's also sounds in the elevator. I tried to leave no space untouched here. As you enter the elevator, we hear sounds from June. And these were sounds of me going to the Pride rally and a 5280 Black Lives Matter solidarity march. They were Zoom 
lectures that I attended. But thinking about, you know, as a gay man, we sort of lost out on pride this year. So what would pride mean to me in this 2020 year? I've had music sung by a couple gay choirs, so I included that as a, a tribute to being on a, as if I were in a pride parade. If you haven't been to the secret stairwell or the back stairs of MCA, there's two sound pieces in this stairwell as well, so hunt them down. This is where storytellers have our music, and there's also the sounds of the election, which of course was a very chaotic couple of months. And this is probably our favorite piece. exact words from the CDC and their instructions on washing your hands and I made a sort of barbershop chorus piece about it. And it's exactly the same time length that you should be washing your hands. So if you ever need a guideline, you know you can use that piece. So that's the general gist of what happens at MCA throughout Soundscape 2020. It exists in a lot of spaces that aren't normally used for uh, visual art, but I think it helps uh, kind of glue the the spaces of the museum together and and present a a work that was my sonic landscape of that year. So I'd like to go back to maybe January and February and invite our first guest on, and we have John Roberts here to talk about our performance. <laughs> Hello, John. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad that not only can I do this show, but I have special guests today, and we are all on our vaccination success journey. So it feels amazing to have live people in a space together and sharing sounds. It's it's like old times, almost. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost to old times, yeah. Well, tell tell me about how you felt our February soundscape and music experience was. Well, I, I thought it was great. I hadn't done any personal music performance for quite a while, and it was great to do something a bit more experimental, less, less what I was used to doing with music in previous years, and uh, it really did kind of bridge that uh, visual art, um, flat artwork, um, and music mediums together, which I hadn't done before to that extent, so I really enjoyed that, but uh, now that I was thinking about it during your intro, um, 2020 really was a, a year framed with, with Nathan and full of Nathan sounds. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I documented oh, the storytellers, true. and we had our performance, and then at the end, uh, still 2020, we were planning the install that's at MCA, which probably took us, what, two and a half months of conversations and planning and... That's right. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Well, you're a great <laughs> collaborator, that's for sure. So we had a gig in February in at Lakewood at the Cultural Center to play specifically graphic scores. And had you, had you done much in this realm before? No. Yeah. I thought you invented it. No, I, I know. <laughs> um, no, it, it was a great experience, and I feel every time 
I kind of revisit it, visit it mentally and artistically, it changes for me. And being in this space, it's going to be different. And as we change, it changes. So I really love that uh, transformative quality of taking artworks and playing them either at a later date or in a different venue for a different audience. And I love that that transformation. Yeah. Or do you think that, I mean, after our performance in February, we had, you know, the world changed mm-hmm. and our whole lives <laughs> changed. Do you feel like, what kind of like emotional arc did you go through over the year? Um, I definitely did a lot of introspection. I feel like uh, that that distance from everybody else and a bit of that isolation, you do a lot of uh, quote unquote soul searching and that sort of thing. So uh, I definitely think I found aspects of myself that uh, were we're lacking in other aspects and where, where do I refocus things? And I'm still continuing that journey. So um, whether that uh, means, you know, changing things physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, but uh, just uh, being more conscious of that journey, I think every day. Yeah, yeah. Were there, for you, were there sounds in 2020 that like really stuck out for you or that were like pinpoints of like oh this is something that I don't know if I'll forget sonically well there, there are some aspects of yours like I said I've been oh. the year was framed by Nathan <laughs> okay or my work yeah. so uh hand washing songs and other things included in that but also um I think lots of home noises you know spending more time with my dog and and all of her little noises and uh all that that rounds out her personality and behaviors and all that. So I think that's uh, been a bit more poignant. Um, But otherwise, it's been filled with a lot of soundtracks, you know, movies, video games, TV shows, those sorts of things. And uh, yes, the sounds of Netflix. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, But yeah, little things in the house, you know, opening and closing doors and the sounds of footsteps and those sorts of things. I think I'm a bit more aware of those, of what they sound like and the emotional memory that comes with that. Totally. That's great. (laughs) Wow. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, We'll have you back in just a couple minutes and we'll do a musical recreation of things. Uh, But up next, we have Hannah Duggan of Buntport Theater. Thanks, John. Thank we'll see you soon. Yeah. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Nathan. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. What were What were we doing this year? Well, this year. <clears throat> We were going to do a show in March, on March 13th. It was going to open, and we had to cancel Yeah. because of COVID. Yeah, we got, we had the set built. <coughs> we had, I mean, we were ready to go. Like, yeah. we were debating, should we have opening night or not? Yeah. It was 13 shows, and then we canceled it opening night. Yeah, yeah. all done. Yeah. Didn't do it. But then we... We found a way to redeem it. We did. We did. We were lucky enough that we filmed it. We filmed it, and it, it was actually, it worked okay, I thought. Oh, yeah. Um, in a way to be filmed. So we filmed that in October, and we put that out into the internet, into the world, and I think people watched it and they enjoyed it. Yeah. I like having, I mean, I haven't ever been in a theater production before since high school, actually. Yeah. But having me on stage in a show and now having a video of it, of it gives me a good like documentation of it to be yeah. like oh I did a thing it wasn't just a show that then we took a couple pictures and then it's yes. over yeah. yeah yeah and most yeah. most of the shows you know I'm in they just we just do it and it's over so it's very weird for me to have a documentation of it too yeah cuz it's like that's not what I do yeah what was our show um, the sh- that's show? right. Yeah. Sh- that is. Yeah. It exists. Um, it was called Cabaret de Profundis, or How to Sing While Ugly Crying. And it was about um, Artemisia II of Caria, 
who was um, a, a, a lovely lady in 350 BC who ended up marrying her husband slash brother, her husband. And when he died, well, his name was Mausolus. When he died, she built a mausoleum, which is, that's why it's called a mausoleum, is because her husband's name was Mausolus. But she couldn't bear to put him in that awesome, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and ended up drinking his ashes every day. Yes, as like a <coughs> catharsis for her grief. That's, yes, yeah. yes, I'm totally choking Ike on spit. <laughs> you okay? I think so, <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Okay. We're both vaccinated here. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm good to go. <laughs> but I love how I, as soon as the camera's on, I start coughing. Like, I'm really, it's like, good. It happens. It does, doesn't it? Good Christmas. So, yeah, that was our show. Yeah, and in an interesting way, we made a show about grief. Yes. Yes, because what happened, I mean, the, the thing is that the Artemisia, she embodies um, people's bodies, literally, um, to keep her grief going, to talk about grief. Because if you continue to grieve somebody, it's, in a way, keeps them alive kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 Do you feel like there were sounds for you that were, like, part of that process or part of your, like, grieving throughout the year? In um, your personal life or personal <coughs> life? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I hate hearing myself and watching myself. Oh. So that whole process of having to see myself and listen to myself singing, that was pretty brutal. Huh. Um, that was very hard for me. And, I mean, it was such a hard year. <sighs> Wasn't it hard? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah it was like the worst. The worst so closed. Yeah. You know, theaters, you're not open. We can't do that. No. We're not big enough. No, and music performances are only starting now. They're in only, their, like, yeah. Baby version. But, yeah. yeah. Like, let's get a band to play for six people. <sighs> yes. It's going to happen, though. People are getting vaccinated, and everything's going to work out. That's right. And we have music that we'll share Yes. Um, in just a few minutes. Yes. Artemisia will come back and do a number with Nathan. Yes. And I play Nathan, but a version of myself in yes. the show. So uh, we have a pretty good... Artemisia and I get along fairly well. Oh, yes. Yeah. I tolerate her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he definitely... Which is so sweet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it was great to write music for this show. Yeah, and it was fun. to act in it and... We'll eventually get a live version as well. Yeah, it'll happen. Yeah. Well, thank you, Hannah. Thank you, yeah. Nathan. Up next, we'll talk to storytellers. Oh, hello. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Nathan. Here are the storytellers. Good to see you. Good to be here. <laughs> Yeah, um, how did how did I approach you guys about a project? I can't remember how I like. I can tell you exactly how I introduced it. it. Yeah. Um, the storytellers performed at the Denver Art Museum, and uh, we were at the Norman Rockwell exhibit, and I believe that you saw uh, that performance. That's right. And so you're like, "Hey, I like you guys, and uh, I have this project that I need some singers for, and so I think there could be some." Synergy for collaboration. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And I had gotten, I had gotten a grant to work with the toy piano, as part of talking about like Colorado landscapes and Colorado culture. And I thought like I need something that represents kind of our Denver community, but in a way that might not be expected. Like a little more. I don't know, surprising, I guess. And the toy piano is kind of silly, anyway. <laughs> so it's like, I need people who will understand that, you know. Um, how has your year, I guess, personally or as an ensemble, been? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it to Jerome. And talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of um, challenge to be creative about what we do, because Singing is one of the big no-nos in, 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 in like COVID because of it's, it's transmitted in the air. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just really just 
everyone trying to make sure that the the art form doesn't die or like teaching online performing online um rehearsing outdoors even in the cold that which we did yes <laughs> a lot of yes i mean we had our we transitioned from having maybe a live performances for our toy piano work to doing the video version yep and it was outdoors yep i remember it was so windy that, that day, day. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. so windy <laughs> Yes, so. and on the one day we had to shoot, there was like a Chinook wind that yeah. came in, and the temperature dropped 50 uh -huh. degrees, yeah, was... and a trash can yeah. blew across the, the field right yeah. behind the camera. Yeah. It was just like <laughs> trash cans. Yeah. Which is not great for audio recording <laughs> at all, but we made it work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, credit John for that. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, also, I'd like to point out to the audience, you actually have two toy pianos. I do have two toy pianos. Which is pretty lovely. Yeah. I. I have a problem with collecting instruments, I think, <laughs> but then they're great. Then I have them forever. I take good care of them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, what do you think were, were there any sounds from your 2020 that sort of stick in your head, maybe aside from our piece that like, I don't know, that seemed like a representation of the year for you? Um, I guess if you consider silence a sound, we've had to spend a lot of time um, either with ourselves or whoever we were kind of accommodating with for the past year. So it's a, it, it was a really good time to reflect. And it was a good time for me personally. I think a lot of changes happened. I moved to Denver in 2020. Um, so it was a good time to really take into consideration what the bigger picture was and kind of utilize that silence to have clarity, at least for me. Hopefully for other people too. <laughs> I think for me it was like the sense of quiet hums. Like even now I can hear like the radiator or whatever it seems to be going. And I just spent a lot of time listening to like those very just low white noise sounds and being like, oh, I'm noticing these in a different way. And then also like the sounds of people entering and exiting online video calls, like the <laughs> dooms and like those. Oh, yeah. Just that, that little sound mm -hmm. uh, really became <laughs> ingrained in my mind. So. For me, the muffled sound of, of the human voice trying to get yes. through a mask right. is very 2020. Right. As we all have had to deal with, yeah. I've been misnamed a lot, um, like ordering things. Mm -hmm. Like Nathan apparently does not come through uh, in a mask very well. And I got like Mason, <laughs> I got Nico. Nico, wow. Yeah, I got Matthew. <laughs> And yeah, it's hard. I'm soft spoken enough as it is. Good. So yeah, Nico, that's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, do you do you feel like as we head now into 2021, there's like a different sound world, or does it feel like oh, it's more of the same, and we're still holding on? Well, I think for me, what's been interesting is I've been spending a lot of time on this new app called Clubhouse, and it's a it's an all audio social media. And so I think that has been really interesting being like how, and like a bunch of weird and interesting stuff happens on there from, you know, musical performances to someone who's doing like a review of Miyazaki films through like sound clips and music and conversations and, you know, instrumentalists, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, I've been thinking a lot about like the sort of transmissibility of sound and how you can connect with people all around the world and there's no like, you know, lag or this, that, and the other because it's such a lo-fi and yet high fidelity way of, of connecting. So it's been interesting. I'm expecting the creativity from last year to carry on and really just um, things that we didn't even think to do, um, like collaborating online um, and, and, and all that. Just now it's possible and it, I don't think it will stop even if we go back to before normal. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of uh, meetings that I never realized I didn't have to have in person. <laughs> <laughs> and that I could just actually have a quick call or a Zoom call in yeah. 15 minutes and then clear things up. And that left me maybe with more time that I use in other ways, probably not as productive nearly. But <laughs> uh, it's a different sound feeling, though, because then you're like, you close the call, you're still at home. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to do also a short performance in a few minutes. We'll try to collage all of our um, three guest groups today together. Um, and we'll 
Yeah, we'll do a little toy piano work, a little storyteller's work. Um, let's see how it goes. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking excited. Forward to it. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having us. You. <laughs> going to start with our graphic score, Saves Through the Radio, and we'll just do one section of it, a couple lines. Maybe viewers online can find out where they're, uh, where we are in the score. <laughs> okay, ready?
Hello, I'm Artemisia, and today I'm going to be singing you one of my favorite songs. But I would like to say, if your sound is up at work, like if you get, if you're a, a lucky duck who works in an office where people listen to each other's things, you might want to turn it down or put in your earphones. Apparently, I say dirty things. Not that dirty though. Just like boobs. I talk about boobs, or butts, tits, and nuts. <laughs> right, Nathan? It is a cabaret. It is a cabaret. We gotta get to feist it around noon time on Wednesday. Feist it. Yeah. Hit it, Nathan. Right. Let's do it. Let's do it. This one's called Dirty Woodcuts. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Mums make dirty wood cuts, so perfect to back bits. Poops and butts and tits and nuts. What's it do with those mugs? Carving out hunks with other swim trunks. They should depict my love's bare breast. A six pack of reasons for incest. Relax! It was 350 BC when I did that. A dirty wood cut of my man makes me hot in my canteen. Dirty wood cuts out of my fan makes me hot in my canteen. Brew to 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 Carving out top notch crotches that should depict my love's bare bum. All plum ripe and ready for a threesome. Remember, he was my husband and my brother, and then that's me, that's three. A dirty wood cut off my man makes me hot in my caftan. A dirty wood cut off my fan makes me hot in my caftan. That's a good one. That is dirty. <laughs> I forgot I talked about so many. I said pubes <laughs> on a Wednesday <laughs> before before one. <laughs> let's True. let's do a duet. Let's take it down. Yeah, yeah. Maybe less scabbing. Less. This time. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll do the scatting for you. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, just a little. Okay. This is a beautiful song. And it's beautiful. You wrote it. I like our duet version. Oh, yes, our duet version is yeah. wonderful. Yeah.
yeah, there's another performance after this. Oh, criminy! The storytellers! All right. We should let them do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. 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 Nathan, question for you as you play. What is uh, one word that describes living in this city for you over the last year? Ooh, that's a good one. I think it's actually sky. Ooh, sky, okay. Awesome. I'm outside and the sky is bigger. It's a little quieter. It feels like the fresh air is like hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. John, what about you? Green. Green? Color? Nice. So, um, this is a completely improvised performance. None of this has been pre written, pre composed, and it's all happening in the moment. difficult for many of us. Maybe it's been a period of uncertainty, a period of pain, perhaps even a period of loss. But as we open up into this spring, I hope that there is at least a modicum of hope for better days. And when we did this project last year, we talked about what does it mean to live in a changing city when faces are being painted over literally and metaphorically and how can we make meaning out of that out of out of community gathering in unity from the hearts it's you to me because can it come to me the truth that is community Put some wings on my back and let me fly. Give me some hope and I'll take you to the sky. We'll look at the sun and we'll look at the moon. We'll laugh together because we'll feel like a loon. We'll be friendly, we'll be friends. We'll take the stories until the end. When I see you across the way, I'll remember the days when it's time to play. Because I don't want to be mean in the spring. We turn from brown to green and there's flowers blossoming in their time when we are going feeling sublime. So when I see you on the street, we'll see each other together like a meet and greet. When we are connected in our heart, the stories from the end to the start. So in this time of change, I know it can be weird. I know it can be strange, but we'll find our next chapter and together we'll turn the page.
<laughs> thank you to the storytellers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Hannah of Buntport and John Roberts. <laughs> I think it's time. We'll probably have time for a few questions. Uh huh. Yeah. What? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. First, First of all, of all that, was that was amazing. amazing. Thank, Thank you so much to to Hannah, to John, to storytellers for sharing your talents with us. Your living room is the place that I want to be in in Denver right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's never been so full of like percussion before, but I like it. Uh, when listening to the music reminded me of the sounds that I've been missing and the sounds that I've been hearing, of course, over the past year. But one of the sounds that I've missed is the sound of singing, of live music, of people coming together, and even of just kind of collective laughter. And as we were preparing for this talk today, listening to everyone in your in your living room telling jokes and laughing and having fun. And I was like, oh, that's what I miss the most. I like I miss people who having having those collective times together. As we I've got a few questions that have come in from the audience. I'll ask those if you're listening out there at home and you have questions for Nathan or for Hannah or for John or for storytellers, please type them in the chat. I'm going to start by just asking you a question, Nathan. Um, I love I love your piece. I've spent a lot of time in the museum listening to it as I travel throughout the elevator in, and around. And it works for me like a time capsule that snaps me back to different moments in 2020. And there's a moment in particular in the in the stairwell, and Cheyenne showed that in the beginning when when we walked through the video of your work. And Governor Polis is speaking in the stairwell, at least for a portion of it, and he says, like, the the judgment that will come for you is the grim reaper. Or I'm paraphrasing, I don't have the words memorized exactly, but I remember that so clearly when he when I listened to it on the news and like feeling the, the, the drop in my stomach of like, oh my goodness, like this is this is for real. This is really serious. I think that's March, the, the, that part of the... Yes, absolutely. So my question is, uh, this method of storytelling or even it's almost like diary making that happens through this, did 2020 lend itself as a, because it was such an unusual year for you to use this as a technique or is this a technique that you've always used and you just overlaid 2020 with your technique? That's a good question. I feel like it's a bit of both. Like I've done sound collages before, but they tend to be of say like a place and time. Like I'm traveling, you know, I'm obsessed with Iceland as most people know, like I'm in Iceland and I'm like recording waterfalls and glaciers and like people partying in the bars there or, you know, the seagulls and stuff. And I'll collage those together. So it sort of feels like a diary. Like you can only be in that place at that time hearing those sounds. 2020, well, I definitely needed time to process it because I don't think I could have done it in a way that was like sort of in real time. I needed that reflection of like, okay, the year is over. Now I'm going to collect all the sounds like a librarian, maybe like an archive of my, at least from my personal experiencing of sounds. And it actually was really difficult reliving in chronological order, all of the interviews and things that really affected me, um, you know, protests and social justice change and you know, things that got canceled and, and hardships. But along with that were these really striking moments of like joy and happiness that I would not have expected. Like I was fully envisioning just getting into like doom and gloom and going from there. <laughs> but it actually, there were these moments of like beauty and, and just joy, like laughter and the howling we had and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and like figuring out how to do online music with people and it sort of buoyed the the collecting and the collaging of the sounds so that it wasn't so 
unusual. It felt a little bit more normal then rather than just like the catharsis or something. Kit Baker asks, to what degree was each individual soundscape customized to the acoustics and the character of the MCA spaces? Oh, good question. Hi, Kit. Um, each, each element, and there, I think there are nine, what would you call it, like, say, movements of the symphony of 2020 soundscape in the museum. Each one of those pieces was calibrated a little bit to the space. So I did adjust, like, how long sounds rang out in a really resonant space versus, like, oh, this, this area is more dry, so I kept the sounds, like, a little bit more dry. Um, I did not go in with like, you know, level meters or anything and sort of did the the fancy portrait, you know, sonic portrait of the space. Like, what are all the reflecting angles? But I mean, I wouldn't put it past me to also do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that the biggest challenge was making all the sounds in each space feel like they were at this balance of they pop out at you when you are noticing them, but you might actually not notice them all that much if you weren't paying attention. So trying to find that balance. Uh, MD Moore, who I think knows you, asks a quick question for you. She wants to know which was more fun or challenging to collaborate with, the 47 or 437 divas or the adrenaline addicted thrill junkies? <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, well, I mean, every, I love every collaboration. Like if I feel good about it, then it's just as good as the last, whether it's like one person or 437 of them. Uh, I would say the, the 437 singers on the balconies of a parking garage was the most adrenaline filled I've ever been. And the most stressful in terms of all these eyes are looking at me and I'm conducting my own work for them. So if I had a choice, I would not be in front of all of those people. I would be like the somewhat background collaborator, but um, gosh, every project is amazing. I can't, I can't pick a favorite really. <laughs> it's like your children. You just can't choose which one is your favorite. Yes. But we all know. The one that I'm excited about is my new favorite. Yeah. So I have a question, and this is kind of for you and all of the folks in the room who are behind the camera too, uh, which is we're moving into this new year. It's a new time of hope. We that's marked by the fact that you're all together there in that space with your vaccines. What are the sounds that are defining this new time as as we're moving into into a new chapter and a hopeful one, hopefully? We might spin the camera if people have other. We got other. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Well, I I feel like we're gonna hear more airplanes soon, and that's yes. gonna be the a new sound. I haven't heard them yet, but uh, I think travel. The sounds of travel will be more prominent. But so far, though. I guess for me, it's the sounds of coffee. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel so good now about like going and sitting outside with people and just like catching up over coffee. And it's like the sips of lattes and like coffee brewing. <laughs> yeah. No, I went to a restaurant for the first time, like last night with my mom in, in a year, in more than a year. And it was weird and so much fun. And it was it, the sounds of like people eating and that's like, what? Right. It's great. Yeah, I think for me, ever since I was a kid, the sound that always defined summer was like when it's like 830 twilight and you can just hear like people playing and laughing and talking and joking just like off in the distance. And it's sort of like this panorama of sound. And I heard that for the first time, like earlier this week. And I was like, wow, like I, I have not heard this sound in a really long time. It's it really oh, cool. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, I think you almost made me cry, Britain. <laughs> I miss that too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, uh, we have one last question that we'll take before we wrap it up for today. And it's a question for you, Nathan, which is, uh, would you be opening to creating a version of Tame Your Man for Toy Piano? <laughs> well, and maybe maybe tell our the folks who are not familiar with Tame Your Man what that what that piece is. Yes, yes. Um, Tame Your Man is um, one of my more like infamous <laughs> hits for piano and bondage artist actually, and the pianist gets more and more tied up to the piano while <laughs> he plays my music, and I choreographed the whole thing. Um, I mean, I could absolutely see, yeah, toy, <laughs> toy pianos strung up in a room, like suspended or something. Yeah, the funniest thing would be then like the size of the adult uh, with the toy piano, but I could, you know, we'll, we'll make it work, yeah. Maybe so, well, stay tuned for that one. I've got, <laughs> thank you so much, Nathan. Thank you so much, Hannah. Thank you so much, John and storytellers for being a part of this this amazing program. Uh, we are so happy to, to have you join us today. Be sure to tune in for our final talk on Keith Haring, which takes place here on our YouTube channel next Wednesday. And we'll have Sarah Shulman and Jim Hubbard, who are the co-directors of the groundbreaking ACT UP Oral History Project. And they'll be here along with Jeannie Leota, who is an artist, a filmmaker, and a professor over at CU Boulder. So hit that red button below to subscribe to MCA's YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.